Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Carry on with the head and neck lectures I'm gonna cover in this presentation The anatomy of the larynx I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh Professor and the head of anatomy department At Mansoura University, Egypt The objectives of my presentation will be First, I'm gonna talk about The cartilages forming the larynx and the joints between these cartilages the ligaments holding them together its muscles description of its cavity its blood supply, lymphatic drainage and finally a summary of its nerve supply we can divide the cartilages forming the larynx into the following Single cartilages and paired cartilages. Single cartilages include the thyroid cartilage, which is the biggest one, the cricoid cartilage, which is the inferior one, just sits above the trachea, and the epiglottis. While the paired cartilages, we have right and left arytenoid cartilages. On top of it lies the corniculate cartilages and in front of the corniculate cartilages lie the cuneiform cartilages. If we describe the thyroid cartilage, it is the largest single cartilage forming the larynx, formed of two laminae. Anteriorly, they unite or blend in what is called laryngeal prominence or Adam's apple. Superiorly, the thyroid notch. Posteriorly, it extends as two horns, the superior and inferior thyroid horns. Laterally, we can see an oblique line which gives attachment to muscles of the larynx. The cricoid cartilage is the most inferior single cartilage of the larynx. It forms a complete circle or a complete ring. Posteriorly, it is formed of a broad lamina, while anteriorly, it has a narrow arch. On each side, there are two articular facets for articulation with the arytenoid cartilage above and inferior thyroid horn below. The epiglottis is a leaf shaped cartilage. Attached to the inner aspect of the angle of the thyroid cartilage by its apex and projects upward and lies behind the pharyngeal part of the tongue. It is freely movable, thus closing the laryngeal inlet during swallowing. The arytenoid cartilages, they are two pyramidal shaped cartilages. Each has three surfaces, a base and an apex. It articulates with the cricoid cartilage and by its apex with the corniculate cartilage. It also has two processes, a vocal one extends anteriorly and a muscular process extends laterally. The vocal process will give attachment to the vocal cords while the muscular process will give attachment to the muscles of the larynx. These two small cartilages, the corniculate and the cuneiform, the corniculate lies at the apex of the arytenoid, while the cuneiform lie anterior to the corniculate cartilages, and they can be found suspended in the membrane extending between the arytenoid and the epiglottis. The cricothyroid joint it is a synovial joint. This means that there will be movement between the cricoid and the thyroid cartilage. It lies between the inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. It enables the thyroid cartilage to tilt forward and downward on the cricoid. This movement will lead to lengthening and tightening of the vocal cords. The other joint we need to know is the cricoarytenoid, which lies 
between the cricoid and the pays of the arytenoid cartilage. It enables the arytenoid cartilage to slide away or towards each other. Thus, these movements will abduct or adduct the vocal cords. Now we talk about the ligaments holding these cartilages together. We have extrinsic ligaments like the thyrohyoid ligament between the thyroid cartilage and the hyoid bone, the cricotracheal ligament between the cricoid cartilage and the first string of the trachea, the hyoepiglottic ligament between the epiglottis and the hyoid bone, and we also have intrinsic ligaments or membranes. We have the cricothyroid ligament and we have the quadrangular membrane or quadrangular ligament. The upper free margin of the cricothyroid membrane forms the vocal ligament, while the lower free margin of the quadrangular membrane forms the vestibular ligament. For the muscles of the larynx, we have the cricothyroid muscle, the thyroarytenoid, the posterior and the lateral cricoarytenoid, the transverse arytenoid, the oblique arytenoid, the thyroepiglottic, and finally the eryepiglottic. You can notice their attachment from their name. The muscles of the larynx are supplied by branches from the vagus nerve as follows. All these muscles supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve except the cricothyroid by the external laryngeal nerve. Of course, uh, what concerns us in the movement of these muscles is to move the vocal cords during speech. So, the muscle that tenses or tightens the vocal cords, the cricothyroid, the one that relaxes it is the thyroarytenoid, the ones that abduct it is the posterior cricoarytenoid, the one that adducts the vocal cords together is the lateral cricoarytenoid. Also, these muscles control the inlet of the larynx, either closes it or opens it. So to narrow the laryngeal inlet, we have the oblique arytenoid and the transverse arytenoid and the eryepiglottic. While to open the laryngeal inlet or to make it wide is done by the thyroepiglottic. If we like to describe the laryngeal cavity, we have the vestibule of the larynx, which is the upper chamber of the laryngeal cavity lies between the laryngeal inlet and the vestibular folds. Then we have an area called laryngeal ventricle. It is the middle part of the laryngeal cavity, lies between the vestibular folds above and the vocal folds below. Below this level lies the infraglottic space. It is the most inferior chamber of the laryngeal cavity lies between the vocal folds and the inferior opening of the larynx at the level of the cricoid cartilage. If we look at this coronal section of the larynx and we can see the laryngeal ventricle, we have one on each side and we can notice that the mucosa of the middle laryngeal cavity bulges laterally. From the laryngeal ventricle, an extension of it lies in front of the thyroid cartilage and extends upward, we call it the laryngeal saccule and it contains many mucous glands. Also we can see the rima vestibuli which is a triangular shaped opening between the two adjacent vestibular folds and also we can see the rima glottitis which lies inferior to the vestibular folds and it is a narrow triangular space between the two vocal folds. This opening separates the middle chamber above from the infraglottic cavity below. 
For the blood supply of the larynx, the arteries are the superior laryngeal artery from the superior thyroid, which is a branch of the external carotid artery. It is accompanied by the internal laryngeal branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. It pierces the thyrohyoid membrane to reach the larynx and supply it. The other artery is the inferior laryngeal artery, arises from the inferior thyroid branch of the thyrocervical trunk of the subclavian artery. It is accompanied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. It ascends between the groove that lies between the esophagus and the trachea and enters the larynx deep to the inferior constrictor muscle of the pharynx. The veins of the larynx accompany the corresponding arteries, so we have the superior laryngeal vein that joins the superior thyroid vein and finally terminates at the internal jugular vein. Also, the inferior laryngeal veins will join the inferior thyroid veins and finally terminate at the left preocephalic vein. For the lymphatic drainage of the larynx, the lymphatic vessels will follow the arteries. So above the vocal folds, the lymphatic vessels will follow the superior laryngeal artery to the deep cervical lymph nodes, while below the vocal folds, they will follow the inferior laryngeal artery to the deep cervical lymph nodes and also to the upper tracheal nodes. To summarize the nervous supply of the larynx, the superior laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of the vagus, splits into two branches. External laryngeal is motor to the cricothyroid muscle, and internal laryngeal is sensory to the mucosa of the larynx above the level of the vocal folds. The other branch is the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which is also a branch of the vagus nerve. It supplies motor fibers to all muscles of the larynx except the cricothyroid and carry the sensation of the mucous membrane of the larynx below the level of the vocal folds. This is the end of my presentation. I hope you like it. If you do, please leave a comment and do not forget to subscribe, like, and share.